today on Live Your Faith. He said, don't let anybody talk you into co-signing for them. Amen. And, and you know, usually this, this happens with, uh, it does happen with so-called, so-called friends, so-called. But a lot of times this happens with family. Okay, amen. You sign, they take from you. You sign, they don't make the payment. Then they come after you. Okay, and you wonder, how could you do that to me? Hello. And in fact, They'll act like they'll see you in the family reunions and everything. And they'll act like it never happened. Now, we've been studying on the subject of habits. Of course, a, a habit is a custom or a frequent rep- repetition of the same act. It, it becomes, becomes something that you do almost without thinking about it. There are good habits and bad habits. God taught his men and women habit-forming things so that they could perform his will successfully. Praise God. Your habits are dictating your presence. And your habits are forming your future. There's no question about it. Now, we've been studying financial habits. We've been going at it this way, 12 steps out of debt and into financial freedom. And if you've missed these sessions so far, step number one was Romans 13.8. Romans 13.8 told us to owe no man nothing but to love him. Praise God. You need to make a decision about that. There are three reasons why God doesn't want you in debt. Number one, God wants exclusive rights to you. Proverbs 22, 7 said that the borrower is servant unto the lender and that the rich rule over the poor. No one should be ruling over you, and you shouldn't be anyone's servant except God's. God wants exclusive rights to you. Secondarily, God wants you to be free and not under bondage. Okay, amen? And financial bondage is a terrible bondage. The third reason why God wants you free from debt, praise God, is that you won't fund God's enemies. If you start searching with the banks and credit card companies and other institutions, the things that they support with the interest money that they get from your pocket, you would be astounded. You would be almost sickened by some of the things that they support with the interest that comes out of your pocket. In other words, you're funding God's enemies and funding your own enemies. Amen. When the word talks about the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, what actually has been happening is that the wealth of the just has been being given to the sinner. The second reason why, praise God, a way to, to get out of debt and to financial freedom is to live below your income, praise God. The third one was to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you with what to do with your money. The fourth one was to delay your gratification and learn at least to have a minimum of three months savings in your bank account. Praise God, six months is better. But at least have that much, praise the Lord. And then we looked at uh, item five, which was count up all the true costs long term. Uh, Amen. And then, praise God, number six was Habakkuk 2.2, 2, which was write down a plan, write a vision, make it plain so you can run it, read it. And then on Sunday morning, we stopped off with number seven was, if you are married, stay married. Now, <laughs> my wife was talking to my daughters after the 11 o'clock service on the telephone uh, Sunday night. And... Uh, she was telling them about what I was saying at the 11 o'clock service. And she, she told them that, uh, they said, well, it sounded like daddy was off the hook. She said, no, he, he wasn't just off the hook. He was on somebody else's hook. <laughs> <laughs> he said he got super ghetto, man. So <laughs> Super duper ghetto. So, well, I'm sorry about being super duper ghetto, but uh, hopefully you got the point. And I understand, I mean, you can nitpick me to life on all of this stuff. I mean, I understand that there's something between uh, a quality dress 
and a dress not of so much quality. But I, you understand I was trying to make a point. I know that some cars are a little bit more quality than others. But you can't deny that your pride ain't got nothing to do with this. Sure does. Some of you will not be caught dead in Walmart. That's just pride, right? Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm not telling you where to shop. I'm talking about why we shop and what we do and why we do it. I'm talking, that's what I'm talking about. So, so you, you can find something. Now, well, I don't agree with that. Well, I'm sure you can find something in there. But the, the truth of what we're talking about, amen, is what you need to have ears to hear. Hallelujah. I don't have a financial problem. This ain't for me. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So we said if, if married, stay married and work together, which is why we wanted to, I didn't read this Sunday, at least at the second service I didn't. It was Amos chapter 3, verse 3. It says, can two walk together? It's asking the question. Can two walk together except they be agreed? And that's what I was ending with, talking about this past Sunday, praise the Lord, is that husband and wife, not only should they stay together, but then they have to sit down, write out a plan, agree on the plan. Amen. You have to work this out. You can't sweep this under the rug. You can't act like this doesn't exist. We can't just keep operating in polar opposites running together, praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, before you got married, you know, you were always in each other's face. And then after you got married, you don't want to be in each other's face. Yeah, amen. You, you, have to, you have to sit down. And you, you have to come up with your markers and your goals and, and then come to an agreement, which means there will have to be, here's a dirty word, compromise. Amen. There's some things that are priority to him and some things that are priority to her. And you got your overall goals, which you've committed to. You decide you're getting out of debt. Amen. So some compromises and sacrifices have to be made, made by both in the name of Jesus. So let's go on now to number eight and praise God. So turn to Proverbs chapter 22 and let's get started. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is one of those series, though, if you act upon it, you will be writing me later thanking me for. <laughs> Amen. Proverbs 22, number eight is don't, don't sign up for others. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 26 reads as follows. Be not thou one of them that strike hands or of them that are sureties for debts. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away your bed from under you? Boy, that's kind of like, uh, <laughs> real clear. <laughs> what did he say? He said, don't let anybody talk you into co-signing for them. Uh, amen. And, and, you know, usually this, this happens with, uh, it does happen with so-called so friends, so-called. But a lot of times this happens with family. Okay, amen? You sign, they take from you. You sign, they don't make the payment. Then they come after you. Okay, and you wonder, how could you do that to me? Hello? And in fact, they'll act like they'll see you in the family reunions every day. And they'll act like it never happened. You just out of ten thousand dollars, but they'll act like what? Everything just fine. Amen. Hello, somebody. I mean, praise God. There's between myself and my wife. I mean, there's family members that I've done that with. Praise God. To this day, decades later, they don't acknowledge they still owe me thousands. Amen? So you don't want to, you don't want to sign 
for other people's debt. If you want to help them so, so bad, then just give them the money in the first place. Amen? But don't put yourself on the hook for somebody else. The word just told you that. You read here verse 29. It says, see a man that is diligent. The word diligent in the Hebrew here means skillful. A man that is skillful in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before obscure men. That word mean means obscure. A man who is diligent in business matters is an individual that is going places. Okay, amen? So he said, don't put yourself in position where you sign up for other people. You know how many people I have all these years I've been in ministry. How many times I've sat down trying to help somebody work through their finances and a great deal of the financial problems they got wasn't them at all. Amen? Is that they took upon somebody else's, somebody else's inability, someone else's refusal to do what they should do, and then they come with crocodile tears. Or they use, I know you a Christian. <laughs> or something else. Okay, amen? Just don't do it. Tell your neighbor, don't co-sign for other people. I don't co-sign for other people. I just give them the money. Amen? And it's over done with. <laughs> amen? It's over and done with. I don't want somewhere down the road, life change somewhere, and then all of a sudden, boop, this pops up. You owe $20,000 out of the blue. What? I didn't buy no such and such. Well, no, I know you did, but you signed for the house, for the car, for the whatever of so-and-so. And they stopped making their payment. And then now, then you really, you really got to do number five. <laughs> then you really got to walk in love. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Because it's amazing how they'll keep letting you pay the bill. They won't even give you a dime. Why are you paying the bill? And I'm talking about your family. I'm talking about your family. Yes, I am. Uh, hang you out to dry in the name of Jesus and cry over your funeral. <laughs> Crocodile tears of how much they loved you, yet they stuck you with that big bill. Amen. All right, let's get on to item eight. Excuse me, item nine. Praise God. Turn to Proverbs chapter 22. Number one, obey Romans 13, 8. Number two, live below your income. Number three, let the Holy Spirit lead you with what to do with your money. Number four, delay your gratification. Number five, kind of count up all the true costs long term. Number six, write down the plan. Number seven, if married, stay married. Number eight, don't sign up for others. Here's number nine, Proverbs 22. Let's read verse six. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up your children this way I'm talking about. Amen. When my kids were four, hallelujah, and they got whatever they got, they had to set aside money for God. They had to set aside money to their piggy bank. Hello, somebody. Began to train this, them up in this from the time that they could comprehend. If you do that, you stand a, a much better chance of not having to bail them out later. In life, when you should be now after the kids are gone, you're supposed to be in your second honeymoon now. You know, they say it's supposed to be a second honeymoon when the kids get out. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And now, after paying college costs, all, all the stuff you've been bringing all these years, these last 20, 22, whatever it is, years, now, finally, amen, you can use what you have for what your goals are for yourself, and then your grown child hits you with wham. 
Amen? If you train them properly, you stand a much better chance of your not having to utilize the money for whether it was your retirement or your 60s, taking care of your parents. I mean, you know, you're supposed to take care of your parents when they're elderly. You're not supposed to kick them to the curb and send them to the nearest nursing home, throw away the key, and don't show up anymore. Hallelujah. If you're doing the things we're talking about, you'll be honoring your father and mother. Honor your father and mother doesn't mean just, just that you be nice to them. Honor your father and mother also means if they get in need, you are there to honor and help them. If you've been following these issues, these teaching, then you'll have money so that you'll be able to help your parents in their elderly days. And the Bible says, the Bible teaches us that you will sow what you reap. So if you kick, you kick your elderly parents to the, uh, under the curb like that, don't you let, let anything happen to you because your kid's going to kick you under the curb. Amen? Believe it or not, should Jesus tarry, you are going to get old. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, yeah, you. You are going to one day get biblically old. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And decisions will be made about you. And they can either come back to haunt you for what you did. Or those decisions will bless you because of what you did. Hallelujah. Amen. So here's another reason. Train your children up this way. And if you train them up, you, you stand a much better chance of not having to be the bailout person at a time in life. Hallelujah. When you shouldn't have to be. If you do this, praise God, this may protect you an awful lot in the future. Now, here's number 11. 10, excuse me. Turn to Proverbs chapter 13. The 13th chapter of Proverbs. We've looked at this verse before. Let's look at it again. Praise God. A good man leaveth an inheritance. That word leaveth because everybody's going to leave everything you got. You came into this world butt naked. And that's the only way you're going out is butt naked. Somebody else is going to have your money. By the way, if I can take a little side journey, it's not what I'm talking about with this. But as a little side journey, you should have a will. You should have one now. If you have anything, you have any possessions. I don't care what your age is. You should have a written will now if you have any possessions. Hallelujah. Expressing what it is that you want done with whatever it is that you have. And cut down the family wars. One of the saddest things that I have seen as a pastor over the years, I have seen people we do the home going service, and they cry and cry, and mama's dead, daddy's dead, or whatever it is, they're gone. You know, people, and, you know, people are really upset, and they, they know, all sorts of stuff is going on. And then, a week later, I'm having to adjudicate between family members who are in a twist to kill one another over the remaining assets. Saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> Bible in their lap, ready to kill over the house that was left. And you know mama, this is, she, she loved me more. This is my house. No, this is my house. You know, this ring belongs to me. This mink stole belongs to me. And this total and complete strife that happens. And if, if the people who died were alive, 
they would smack them all. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It's a little side journey, but I'm just, just, just take, take a minute. If you have any assets, you should do this now. Yeah, amen? I don't believe I'm going nowhere for a long time. With long life, will you satisfy me and show me my salvation? But I have already done this. Amen? I know who's going to get what and when and where and how, they, how it's going to be delivered. I've left stuff to my grandchildren. Hello? Which one gets what I even left stuff to my grandchildren? They ain't born yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, because I want to be a good man. And besides, if I write it now, I can always threaten them. I'm going to write you out my will. You don't, no, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I've never said that one time. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Think it, but say it. That's a different issue, but no. <laughs> Amen. So it, here's the next one. Prepare for your children's future. Praise God. This is why you do these things. You do these things to prepare for their future. You have an obligation to them. Absolutely obligation to them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So you prepare and you prepare from the beginning. If you are following the habits that I'm teaching you about, of course, doing what, doing what the word said in Proverbs 3, 5, and elsewhere, honoring the Lord with your substance. Honor your children. If for no other reason why you want to put away, you want to honor them. Help them get started with life and not get started with debt. Worst thing you can do for your kid, kids start life at 22 years of age. They got a college degree, all right, but they got $180,000, $200,000, $250,000, whatever it is, in debt on their shoulders. Which means they can't follow God. They got to take whatever job's available, they got to grab whatever opens the door, and they don't have the time or chance to really get into the flow of God, what God really wants them to do. And let me tell you, you spend 60% of your waking moments at work. So if you got somewhere where you're not supposed to be and you don't really like, that is a terrible position to be in. All right, let's get down to number 11. It is number 11, right? All right. Number 11. Add extra payments on the mortgage. Pay it off early. Pay off your smallest bills first. And then double up. What I mean by that? I mean, well, look, so you have made the decision, which is the important one, number one, of Romans 13.8. You have made this decision. Debt-free is what I'm going to be. And I'm doing it, praise God, for the kingdom of God. I'm doing it because I see it in the word. I do it. I'm doing it so I can bless my family. I'm doing it so I can bless my grandchildren. I'm doing it, praise God, so I can bless myself. I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. Praise God. I know the word has ministered to you and blessed your life. But there's one more thing we need to do. And that is I want to invite you to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart. You know, the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 and 13, it says that if you would confess or acknowledge with your mouth Jesus as the Messiah, would believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that you would be saved. It reads, with the heart you believe unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation or deliverance. And then verse 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Lord will not turn you away. If you ask him to come into your life, he will do so right now. You say, how can I do that? By praying with me right now. And we're going to pray according to the scriptures that we just read. Just bow your head wherever you are right now. That's right, bow your head right there. And let's pray out loud in Jesus' name. Come on, pray with me now. Dear Heavenly Father, that's right, come on. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died for me on the cross and carried my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I accept you as my Savior and as the master of my life. I repent of sin. I'm sorry, Lord, but I accept your offer of forgiveness. I am now forgiven. 
I am now cleansed. Heaven is my home. Jesus is my Lord. I'm born again. Hallelujah. If you just prayed that prayer with me, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is coming to your heart and life and you will never be the same again. We want to give you some free material here that we authored here at Word of Faith called Where Do I Go From Here? Praise the Lord. Just a little book to give you some instructions about now that you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, what you do from this moment forward. And all you need to do is just do what they're telling you on the screen and we'll get it to you right away. This is Keith Butler reminding you to have a wonderful day. And always remember to fight the good fight of faith. God's super will get on your natural, praise God. You may see how it's going to happen, and you may not see how it's going to happen. But the one thing I can tell you, when you obey God, you get God's miracle, and I know what God wants from you. He wants you to be totally and completely free in every area of your life, including your financial life. Are you struggling with debt and looking for financial freedom? Did you realize that God wants to set you free? God wants his children to walk in financial freedom. Being in debt to men means that they own you until the debts are paid off. God wants no man to own you. He wants you to be free, for he already paid the ultimate price for you to be free. In this series, 12 Steps Out of Debt and Into Financial Freedom, Bishop Keith A. Butler teaches you spiritual and practical ways to get you out of debt and walk into financial freedom. By receiving the spiritual teachings and using the practical instructions, you can be free from debt and do what God has instructed you to do financially. These messages are must-have for your collection. Order 12 Steps Out of Debt and Into Financial Freedom today so you can learn how to get out of financial bondage and be set free financially. For check and money order payments, please write to the address on your screen. All other methods of payment, please call 1-888-909-WORD. That's 1-888-909-WORD. Or you can order online 24-7 at our e-store on our website at www.woficc.com. Order your copy today and begin to empower the Holy Ghost to get involved in your life and help you bring the fullness of God's blessing to you right now.